The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. We're here to talk about ITIL version 4, or ITIL in, in general, um, for the next half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Um, do feel free with any um, questions that you may have as we go through. I will be coming to them at the end, um, but if you wanted to type in any questions into the questions box um, within the, um, the program that you're watching now, do feel free to do that and I will get to them at the end. Okay, so my name is Alice Baker. Um, I am the Consultancy Manager for IT Governance Europe. I've been within service management for, oh, too long to remember, um, but for the last 15 years about, um, starting off by managing a service desk uh, for a number of years, then moving into service management design processes, so actually designing, designing processes and trying to embed them um, within what I used to refer to as traditional, uh, a traditional IT environment. Um, and then latterly in consultancy, so working with um, organisations, assisting um, in process design, etc. Um, I'm a qualified, at the moment, ITIL version 3 expert. Um, so transitioning, which we'll be coming to, as part of this presentation, transitioning to version four. Um, I manage a team of consultants um, across Europe um, who cover a variety of, of fields, including privacy and management systems. Um, so as well as delivering in-house and um, public accredited training courses um, on service management, information security and risk management as well. And of course, um, bespoke training um, on implement, uh, process implementation. So those of you that um, don't know about IT governance, we are uh, what we like to refer to as a one-stop shop um, that deals with anything to do with governance, risk and compliance. Um, we um, cover very strongly the areas of um, privacy, uh, and of course, information security, cyber resilience generally, but also around more general governance and risk management, and of course, service management, which is what we're talking about today. And we do that with a blend of product through um, consultancy and certifications, through technical security, training, training courses, software tools, and books and toolkits. So a little bit of everything to help give you the most rounded the most rounded package. So today we're going to be talking about ITIL version 4, um, the service management framework and kind of how it's evolved. So for a long time we've had ITIL version 3 um, and so we're going to talk about the main differences between ITIL version 3 and this new version 4 which is very new. So another acronym um, we like a good acronym with ITIL. Um, SVS stands for service, um, the service value system. Um, we're going to talk about the certification levels with this new version of ITIL and then how individuals can transition from ITIL version 3 to ITIL version 4 in their certifications. So why is ITIL four come about? Well, the last update to version three was in 2011, so eight years ago. Um, so, and because technology is advancing faster than it ever has, um, that, that set of processes that were with ITIL began to look very dated. Um, so now we have things like cloud computing, infrastructure as a service, um, blockchain, they've all created fresh opportunities for value creation. We talk with ITIL version 4 um, about value co-creation, so the relationship between um, IT in the simplest um, 
uh, simplest form and their customers. It's a two way thing now we talk about. We talk about value co creation rather than delivering value from IT to our customer. We recognize now that it is very much a two way, um, a two way street. So um, IT is a very important business driver and the way we do business. Um, everything is IT enabled, almost all our services today are IT, IT enabled. What ITIL also recognises is, is that every organisation is a service organisation. So this is really more about service management, not just IT service management, which traditionally it always was. So with IT service management and service management generally, we need to understand how to manage our technology services so that organizations can create value for their customers. So ITIL 4 no longer talks about a life cycle, a service life cycle. So if um, those, I, I'm not sure how many um, of you are version three, um, you know, familiar with version three, um, if you're completely new to ITIL, then actually what I'm, what I'm saying now possibly won't mean anything to you. But um, ITIL 3 used to talk about a life cycle of a service. So if a service was, say, um, your email service, you, you would um, start off with a service strategy, how you, know, how you were actually going to deliver it. Then you would design it and then you would transition it and get it ready for the live environment and then you would put it into service operation and it would be live and you, you would work with it day to day. And all of the time you would get this continual service improvement. Doesn't talk so much about that now, it's replaced the life cycle and talks now about something called the service value system and our four dimensions model. Okay, so purpose of ITIL 4 is to provide organisations um, with complete guidance for the management of IT enabled service services in the digital economy. Okay, so ITIL has been around a long time. ITIL is a, one thing that ITIL isn't is a methodology or a standard and therefore you can't actually be compliant to ITIL. So a lot of people say we're using ITIL methodology etc. That's not really a thing. Um, it is a collection of best practice. Um, lots of people recognise it, it's, it's globally recognised. So, but it's been around for a long time. So started off in the 1980s, um, where it was known as the government, Governance Information Technology Infrastructure Management Method, is what it was called. Um, however, it was soon rebranded. 1989, it changed its name to ITIL, which stood for, at that time, the IT Infrastructure Library. Acronyms are never as, as exciting as they sound, are they really? Um, and it was only about five years ago that they actually dropped the IT Infrastructure Library bit and ITIL itself became a brand. So it isn't because it's not focused on infrastructure, which perhaps it used to be, and it's not necessarily a library either, although there are a lot of books about it. Um, it's a framework. It is a framework of best practice. It's actually owned by Axelos, who are a joint venture between the UK Cabinet Office um, and Capita. They are the custodian of all of this best practice. So in 2000 to 2001, they brought out version two, which is the service delivery, which focused on service delivery and support. And then in 2007, version three came about um, where this service lifecycle that I mentioned earlier came into being. And then the last time they updated it was in 2011, where um, this became more business focused, if you like. It was much more recognize, recognizing the fact that IT was an, an enabler for the business. 2016 brought us another qualification for individuals, which was called the ITIL Practitioner. And that brought about some, this thing called the Guiding Principles, 
Now, the guiding principles have been incorporated into ITIL version 4, and we're going to talk about those in a second. So, there's a huge amount of work that's gone, that, that's, um, gone into the creation um, and the collection of this, best, of this best practice. So, ITIL 4 does build on previous versions of this framework. Um, but it talks about an end-to-end -end digital operating model um, that's, been, that's, that's been designed to help us to, um, sorry, um, designed to help IT teams create, deliver, and operate technical products and services that fit their organization's wider business strategy. So it's very much IT are very much a partner in all of this. So the service value system um, is supported by seven guiding principles, which we'll talk about very briefly. Um, they have evolved, as I said before, from ITIL version 3.9 guiding principles for practitioners. So they've been kind of tuned um, and, and cut down, and a couple of them have been amalgamated together. Um, it also, they, they have been aligned very much with those found in other methodologies around Agile, DevOps and Lean. So it's using very similar terminology. Those that have been used to ITIL before, it's all about terminology. Um, and the more people in your organization are actually ITIL trained, the more they all speak the same language. Now ITIL 4, those that may remember version 3 will remember that ITIL version 3 was a collection of 26 processes. It doesn't refer to processes anymore, we talk about practices and it splits them into different areas. So we have general management practices, service management practices and technical management practices. So the ones that you may recognize a practice may be something like change you know, change control, it may be continual improvement, it might be information security management, um, it might be infrastructure management. So they're all, what now ITIL 4 refers to those as practices. Okay, so The service value chain. So this is the typical, the, the model that you see with version um, um, version four. So our service value system is made up of some core components, and they are some guiding principles, which we're going to talk about. The some governance. We're also going to talk about that. Now it talks much more about governance in this version of ITIL than it did before. It talks about the service value chain and that's where everything really happens. Um, so things are fed into there. So the opportunity and demand is fed into the left hand side of that model and hopefully once the time it's gone through our service value chain, value comes out the other side. Notice that there's a double arrow between value. So value, um, that's, that's to illustrate the value co-creation. Obviously part of all of that are the practices that we follow and also continual improvement. Now there is a specific practice on continual improvement now. We also talk about the four dimensions model. Now, those of you that may remember version three will remember the four P's, people, products, partners. I can't remember the fourth one now. <laughs> people, processes, partners and products. There we go. Um, and that was to ensure a holistic approach really to service design. Now, this has been expanded and talk about the holistic approach to service management. So those four organizations and people, information and technology, partners and suppliers, value streams and processes. So they are very similar to the four P's, but it's putting it around the whole of service management rather than just the service design. So the idea being that by giving each of those four dimensions an appropriate amount of focus, 
an organisation ensures that its service value system remains balanced and effective. Taking into account external factors as well. So the guiding principles, service value system describes how all the components and activities of the organisation work together as a system to enable value creation. But we do it by using these um, these pr principles. First one being focus on value. That's always going to be our main, uh, our main focus. We are um, co-creating value with our customer. Progress iteratively with feedback. That one refers to don't do everything all at once. So deliver, deliver value in small stages. So bite-sized chunks, you do things quicker that way respond to the feedback, um, make improvements, think and work holistically, look at everything as a whole, look at a solution as a whole. Start where you are, understand what you already have, what you already have and build upon that, um, rather than just start again at the beginning. So start where you are, you've got things that maybe you may be able to use, incorporate into any new service, um, you may have things that actually just need to be retired. Collaborate and promote visibility. This is all about the communication. Um, traditionally in IT, we don't necessarily promote visibility or communicate um, success. Unfortunately, when things go wrong in IT, everybody knows about it. But when we do things really well, sometimes we don't promote that. And so promoting visibility of what we're doing so our, all our processes are very transparent is really important. And keep it simple and practical. What do they say? Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Um, not making things too complicated. And of course, optimize and automate. So make everything as um, efficient as possible and automate where possible. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Okay, I mentioned earlier that we talk about practices rather than processes. Now, there's a horrible number of them there, but those of you that may be thinking of doing the ITIL 4 foundation course, you'll be glad to know that you don't need to know about all of those. A bit like version 3, you have to know a little bit about all of them, but you don't, not on the foundation level. You need to know about 15 of them. So, um, they are split into different areas. So we talk about general management. Now that's the business as a whole. So the business as a whole says it's a good idea to, to deal with risk management, for example. Business as a whole says it's a good idea to do continual improvement. Worry about information security. Make sure knowledge is shared. We need to do some measurement and reporting. And of course, organizational change management. If you look over on the right hand side, the service management practices, some of those, those that have been used to um, perhaps version three of ITIL, you'll recognize, change the names slightly. Um, things like capacity and performance management, change control, incident management, problem management, all of those should be quite familiar to those that are familiar with ITIL terminology. Service desk. Please note, those that remember version three, you had this horrible distinction between processes and functions, and the exams always tried to trip you up on those. They are all practices now. You don't have that distinction between them, but some, some of the names um, are very similar. And then in the middle, you've got another area of practices called technical management practices, which is where you've got infrastructure and platform management, software development, management, okay, and deployment management. So governance. Governance is something that's talked about a lot. We have to demonstrate governance. So organizational governance is the system by which an organization is directed and controlled. So there are three parts to this. We have to evaluate 
So the evaluation of the organization, its strategy, portfolios, and relationships with other parties. So we need to evaluate that because things change, things change, stakeholder needs change. We also direct. Governing body assigns responsibility for and directs the preparation and implementation of organizational strategy and policies. So this is where we direct via policy procedure requirements generally, and then we monitor those. So monitoring the performance of the organization and its practices, products and services. So whenever we're being audited, that's what's, ha that's what's happening. So no good having a practice or a procedure um, if we don't monitor that it's actually being followed. One of the practices and one of the um, main areas of our service value system is about continual improvement. Now, there's a much bigger focus on continual improvement. And the model that we're using for continual improvement may look familiar to some that um, have seen ITIL version 3. But we start with a question, what is the vision? So what is the business vision here? Um, what's the mission? What, what's the business trying to achieve, the goals and objectives? We then ask ourselves the question, where are we now? So performing baseline assessments, where are we now? We then need to understand where we want to be. And by that, we're going to identify a gap. And then we can define our measurable targets. Then we have to understand how we're going to get there. And so that's when we have an improvement plan. So how are we going to um, make sure that we close all our incidents within the SLA time, 95% and we're currently at 45%. So that's our plan of how to get there. So then we take action. So then we execute our improvement plans. And then we actually need to measure, did we get there? Was our improvement, were the improvement actions, um, did, they, did they achieve what we were hoping they were going to achieve? And then that endless question, how do we keep the momentum going? Because of course, we don't just do one thing, we keep improving. So hence the continual. The, as you know, ITIL, an organization cannot be accredited to ITIL, okay? Um, the ITIL certification scheme is for individuals, so, so professionals. So there have been changes to the certification scheme. Um, we used to have the different certification levels, foundation, then practitioner, and then some of the intermediate um, courses, um, the ITIL expert and a master. We now have four, still a foundation, and then there's two streams, one called managing professional and one called strategic leader. And then on top of that, you've got the master, which was always there before in version three. So the foundation course for ITIL version four was launched in February this year. The managing the professional, the strategic leader and the master are not released yet. They will be released later, later this year. Um, so we're watching to see you know, when those um, syllabuses are, are released. So the two designated streams, managing professional and strategic leader, either way, you need to achieve the foundation certificate and then complete some of these modules. So in the managing professional um, stream, we have one called ITIL specialist, create, deliver and support. Again, ITIL specialist drives stakeholder value, ITIL specialist high velocity IT, and then ITIL strategist direct plan and improve. Now in the other stream, the strategic leader, that is the same module appearing again, okay? Um, so, but with an extra one, ITIL leader, digital and IT strategy. Now it could be that you then, you can, you can do both of those, in which case you can then um, progress to an ITIL master, should you wish to. Okay, 
So both those streams contain the ITIL strategist model, module, sorry, you need to complete all those modules in the relevant stream in order to achieve their designation. And if you do both, then you can study to attain the, uh, the rank of ITIL master. Details of that are, are not too clear at the moment, um, but we'll certainly be publishing them as soon as ITIL is due. If you are a version, ITIL version three, um, you've got two options depending on how far along you are. If you have ITIL three version three foundation, you've got an ITIL version three foundation certificate, then the advice is that you should take the ITIL four foundation in order to be able to transition to the new certification scheme. So you'll find a lot of differences between them. Um, there isn't a transition between the foundations. Um, it, it is a case of taking that one again. If you're already along that journey towards ITIL Expert version three, and you might have that with, you know, you might have done the version three practitioner, or you might be somewhere along the, the lines of either the service lifecycle route or the service capability, keep going on that. Um, until you get the 17 points. Now, you can then take a transition module for the managing professional. Again, that's not released yet. It will be released later in 2019. Anybody that's already an ITIL version three expert, again, that's the transition module that you, that you will need to take. So we cover that we, we have a wide range of training courses. We actually run the foundation that we do run the ITIL both versions uh, foundation course um, although I'd recommend that you do if you haven't done a foundation before I'd recommend you go straight for version four um, there are various um, ITIL exam guides that um, you know in, in our um, from our publishing um, arm and some various online courses we've also got partnerships with with other training providers as well um, so we can supply the whole package to you. So there is an ITIL version four foundation course. Um, the book over on the right hand side there, the ITIL, ITIL foundation, ITIL four edition, that the training course, the foundation training course syllabus is designed completely on that book. Um, now, if you were to go um, part, part of the, the package that, that we offer with ITIL 4 Foundation is you will get that book as well because that's the textbook really that goes with the course. There are various others now at the moment, the ones that say ITIL Service Design, Service Strategy, Continual Service Improvement, those are training courses, they are version 3 training courses um, to if you are on that journey already. Um, to get to, to um, version three expert. But remember, you can transition uh, toolkits, um, other various books, etc. If you're interested in any of this, now depending on where you are um, in the world, because I know that we've got some of you from um, who are UK based and some of you Europe based, please note on here. Um, just to just to channel you to the right areas we've got two different contact areas one for the uk one for the eu um, just to make sure that any email inquiries you send um, can um, go to the right people and also you you get the right rates etc on um, on the website so okay so i think we've got to a question a question point. Um, any questions on any of that? Oh, hello. Okay, so the first one that I've got there, um, difference between service value system and business value chain. It's actually the service value chain. Um, the service value system is the whole system, the, the system as a whole, Service value chain is part of that. Now, the service value chain has a number of activities. Um, the yeah, so service value chain is, has a number of activities. 
Um, so, and that is part of the service value system. It's very difficult to actually explain it in one in one hit there, but um, you know how in version three you'd have things like um, the service knowledge management system, the, the uh, configuration management system, and, and the configuration management system was part of the service knowledge management system. It's a kind of similar similar um, aspect, really. Okay, so next one, currently an ITIL version three expert. Do I now need to go back and do the ITIL four foundation course? No, you don't, Jason. Um, what I would suggest there is that you wait for further news and we will certainly post it when it comes up um, that, to just do the transition, um, the transition course when that comes. What's the job market like for ITIL practitioners? Some organisations um, do, it's a prerequisite, certainly to have ITIL foundation. Um, so we've got a number of clients that come through our ITIL foundation courses and it's, it, we regularly have uh, delegates from those companies because it's a prerequisite for them. Um, so even though, um, you know, even, even though they may have got the job without having that foundation, it's one of the first things that they do. So, um, okay, what are the options for training from India? Um, good, very good question. Um, we are going to be offering, well, we are offering actually um, some online training. So you could do that um, version four training online. So, um, by all means, um, now they're, they're published online at the moment on the EU website. So, if you wanted to click the link to there, um, that well, hopefully the timing will suit you. Um, how many days training is the management, management professional transition course? Don't know that yet, I'm afraid. Um, that information hasn't been published. So, um, would I recommend employees starting the journey of learning ITIL even though the systems we're using are not ready for the ITIL framework? Yes, I would, definitely. The organisation I used to work in quite a long time ago, um, we it was a very, and I'll use that term again, traditional IT, if you like, and we didn't really have many processes and it was very technical, very full of technical um, people. Um, but you can't go without processes for a long time, you know, for a very long time. Um, you have to have some kind of framework. And the more the more people that can speak the same language, um, the better in those situations. We got on much faster and had much better processes in place and showed much greater governance once everybody had been through ITIL Foundation and heard them were speaking the same language. Okay, sunset for ITIL version three. Don't know the answer to that. They don't, they haven't planned a, a sunset yet. Um, so I believe it will still be going for, you know, because I mean, those ITIL version three processes are, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in there. So I don't think they're planning to actually actually retire it yet. Um, but the ITIL version four way of thinking is much more um, in line, if you like, with, with technology today. Um, is it possible to implement ITIL with limited time and budget? Okay, so we don't implement ITIL, we implement some of the practices that ITIL may um, may um, recommend, shall we say. Yes, it is. What you do is you just choose the practices that are, um, you know, are worth, worth it for you. Now, it may be that you do three or four. It may be that you do incident management. Change control is always one that should be done. Um, perhaps service level management 
something like that. So, um, okay. So, so yes, you just you just adopt those that are going to give you business value. Noticeable difference in the implementation from process before to now practice, like service desk. No, is the simple answer to that. Not really. Um, they're just called practices, um, whereas service desk before was what they called a function. But no, not really. It is putting particular practices into place. When would we have the transition course live from ITIL 3 to ITIL 4? Not sure. They're talking about the end, of the, so quarter four, 2019. Good question about ISO 20,000 here. Um, will ISO 20,000 change to the ITIL new version? Not at the moment. ITIL 20, ISO 20,000 has only just um, had an update. September last year, and it still uses um, ITIL version three as its as its base. Um, however, you know the principles of a lot of the practices, the things that are in there around change control, around um, uh, service level management, that's all the same. That's all the same in version four anyway. Um, so, so. At the moment, there are no plans for, the, not that I know of, any plans for ISO 20,000 to change. I suspect that it will eventually. Uh, getting management buy-in, that's always a challenge, isn't it? Um, so with um, directors very reluctant to share their vision with their vision with management. It's all about painting pictures, isn't it? About painting pictures of the benefits. Um, I think one of the easiest, I don't know whether you are an internal service provider or external service provider. If you're an internal service provider, um, one of the most productive things you can do is come up with some kind of service level agreement and negotiate that. And then people start to understand what it is that you're doing. So um, it's it's a hard one. It is about painting. It is about painting pictures. Um, but and it's the same with with any sort of process change that, that you want to do. You've got to be able to paint the picture of the benefits of having more control. Perhaps some of the uh, processes will allow you to work faster. So good change control practices actually, if you do them properly, mean that you can um, deliver more faster. Management always like that, so that might make them listen. Um, but it is, you know, and it's being able to prove that you're an, an enabler so that you can support their business vision. But it is a hard one. And yes, you will have the slides um, afterwards. They will be emailed to you. I think that's got to the end of my list of questions here. Any more from anyone? Okay, so if that's everyone, every, oh, hello, and the presentation, yes, you will, you'll have, um, you, you will have the slides. Okay, thank you very much, everybody, um, for listening, and do get in touch, and I hope we see you on one of our courses. So thank you very much.